guys peeled out here. It's uh, not exclusively uh, ours, the airspace. Now, the UFO hunters have fighters in the air. Coming for the attack. Guns, guns, guns. And are looking to prove this case once and for all. Like the Jafari event, Oscar Santa Maria's case was discovered by the Department of Defense and Joint Chiefs of Staff, and a full report was issued, which landed on some of the most powerful desks in Washington, D.C. Pilots had just taken off in two fighter planes to help recreate and prove Oscar Santa Maria's reported UFO dogfight encounter over Peru in 1980. The pilots are now approximately seven minutes away from their dogfight location. I uh, gotta keep your eyes peeled out here. It's uh, not exclusively uh, ours, the airspace. Recently declassified military documents show that a detailed report was actually made about this event, much to Santa Maria's surprise. After your flight, the American Department of Defense just had your whole statement in, 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 in a Defense Department report. And I'm wondering, how do you think they got it? La comunidad de inteligencia entre los estados intercambian información. Oh, really? So it's, it's a close community between countries and the air forces. So they communicate with each other and they let each other know. While the U.S. government stopped investigating UFOs with the closure of Project Blue Book in 1970, this Santa Maria report, released by the Joint Chiefs of Staff, shows something else. It is presented here for the first time on television. This document was distributed to the Secretary of Defense, Secretary of State, the NSA, and the CIA. The title of the document is, quote, UFO Cited in Peru. The document clearly states, quote, Source is officer in the Peruvian Air Force who observed the event. The source reported, quote, a UFO was spotted near a Peruvian Air Force base in southern Peru, and the FAP tried to intercept and destroy the UFO, but without success. This event reached the highest levels of the United States Department of Defense. And remember, Peru was not an American client at the time. It was a Soviet client in the Cold War. So it reached the highest levels of our Defense Department. How? Oscar Santa Maria first received a copy of this document in 2001 when the Peruvian Air Force opened up the country's first official UFO investigation. After studying dozens of cases, the Peruvian Air Force found this to be the most credible unresolved UFO case in the country's history. There is no word on what the official U.S. government's response was to this document. You have the, lead. the fighter planes have reached their location. The dogfight is about to begin. Former U.S. Air Force flight test engineer Bill Scott sits in the Oscar Santa Maria plane, and UFO hunter Ted Ackworth will be in the UFO plane, attempting to maneuver like the UFO. Just like Santa Maria, they line up in firing position. Santa Maria said he fired on the UFO with no effect. Next, Santa Maria said the UFO came to a complete stop. It's something no known plane can do because the incredible G-forces would kill the pilot. Gun, 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 we're uh, going. Ready, ready. Here comes the brake. As the UFO plane hits the brakes, the Santa Maria plane flies right by having to bank in order to avoid collision. Even in this prop plane, the G-forces of slowing down so much have a rough effect on the cameraman in the chase plane. Uh, camera guy's puking. Trying to do his business with the bag. The team repeats this maneuver three times. In the most harrowing maneuver possibly ever attempted by a Peruvian Air Force pilot, Santa Maria reached the operating ceiling of his aircraft, 62,000 feet, 
while being pursued by the UFO. His life was on the line. And, uh, go up there and why don't you start a, uh, how about 11, 360, 45 degrees of angle. This is uh, the simulation where the uh, UFO uh, goes vertical. Uh, when we're ready, I'll give a count of three, and then Baron will just tighten up the turn and pull away from us. Joker, in the Santa Maria plane, swoops down from above. The UFO evades, and Joker dives into a J pattern, climbing to nearly vertical. The UFO follows behind, attempting to climb vertically as well. There he goes vertically. Goodbye. We can't catch up. What they have just shown is that there is no way a man-made craft could accelerate from a standstill to over 1,000 miles per hour at that altitude in an instant. It further shows that one of the world's best fighter jets at the time could have never caught up to it. Okay, let's go home. Okay, Baron has a lead. Clear to rejoin. Right side, point of question. set it up where the uh, bogey of the UFO was here, and then we made several passes at him. Okay. Did, the UFO, did the UFO have a chance? Uh, the UFO's always got the chance, but yeah. he outmaneuvered us, and if the UFO was able to climb at the rate it did, uh, it doesn't matter what we were flying. It sounded like the UFO was just playing with him. Yeah. Being inside the aircraft and, and basically attempting to copy or mimic those maneuvers, you just realize there's just no way any man-made vehicle could have performed those maneuvers that that UFO did. Either the colonel's lying or we had some sort of object that is totally not man-made that exceeded all known flight performance characteristics of anything that, that we, we have terrestrially. The team reconvenes in the map room to discuss the results of their test flights. The planes we just flew, there's no way they can climb vertically. No, I don't and have performance no level. A standing speed. start to that speed. Right? How many planes are there out there that could uh, that could climb supersonically vertically? There's a lot of them that can. Anything with better than one to one thrust ratio. However, you don't start from a dead start. Right. You have to get a run like he did. It's the speed <clears throat> and the maneuverability. Uh, when you hear the story of this thing stops goes vertical, goes to more than supersonic instantly, hovers, goes to nothing we can do, nothing we can do to match that. To actually engage a, a UFO for a period of 20 minutes, uh, that, that's, uh, that's something extraordinary. Uh, it, it, you, know, you might see something for a moment or two and not be able to identify it, but be able to engage it for 20, 22 minutes, uh, that's, that's a totally credible uh, situation. Two cases. Two credible pilots, two sets of official military unclassified documents that show these cases went to the highest level of the government. And what about the other cases of UFO dogfights that have not yet been reported? Two pilots in two different parts of the world have engaged objects with extraordinary maneuverability, but it's not clear what. The team's work continues.